Atiti Devo Bhava, guest is God. That's the epitome of hospitality in India. And we followers of Sanatan Dharma have imbibed that principle in our daily life. And today is a very special day for me because a very, very elevated sadhu from India, Vrindavan, is coming to bless our house to take darshan of our Radishyam. And I'm about to cook a little feast for my Radishyam and for him. So if we are lucky, I would like to interview him and ask him two questions. As far as I remember, it was a very special way how he joined the Hare Krishnas, how he ended up in Vrindavan. Uh, and the second one is because I often see in the comments of my videos, why? Uh, do I have Giriraj Maharaj at home and that we are not allowed to take him out of the dham because uh, it is a great sin. Yes, I know it is sinful to take him out of Vrindavan, but if someone gives him to us, then it's not. But I would like to share his answer with all of you. So let's dive into this video. So I made this alu gobi up to now dal here is the liquid zucchini spinach sabji i still have to make rice then over here i have the cake and in the fridge i have the shrikant Hare Krishna, Gurve, Gaur, Chandraya, Radhikaya, Etadaliya, Krishna, Krishna Bhakta, Etada Bhakta, Inamonamaha. So this is a very wonderful mantra, offering obeisances to Guru, Gauranga, and Shimati Adharani, Krishna, Krishna's devotees. And all the devotees, we show respect to everyone who has some belief in God, uh, who is interested in spiritual life. But first comes the spirit master, because without the grace of the spirit master, it will be difficult to advance in spiritual life. Oh yes, so I've been asked to tell my story. I mean, I cannot tell my whole story, because otherwise we'll be here this, till this evening. We'll keep it short and just how I came to India the first time and the second time also. And when I was always interested in spirit life since childhood, and I believed in God, but I was a little disappointed, disappointed from the from the priests in the church. But I had some, I had faith, but and I wanted to know more. And then I read books about Chinese philosophy, Indian philosophy. But especially, I was attracted towards India, and I was always thinking, I have to go to India. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so then, of course, I had friends who had gone to India and came back playing sitar and tabla. And then on my 20th birthday, my father gave me money, 2,000 Swiss francs. So that was 44 years ago. It was, and I thought, and I already had planned to go to India. And so I didn't tell my parents, I'm going to India. I was telling them, I'll just go a little bit around Italy, Greece and something. And I went to Italy, my hitchhiking with some mm -hmm. devotee, with some one person who was not really devotee. And then I in search of the absolute truth with some hoping to get some good association. And then I went to Greece, but I was a little disappointed I'm with a so-called spooky person. So I thought, let me go to India. I took a plane arrived in Monday with a entry tourist visa for one month. And because I heard about Brindavan, I came to Brindavan. The devotees I met there, and they asked me, so you want to stay? You can stay for free in the temple, and and then, uh, yeah, you can uh, get free food. Sure, yeah, great. Okay, so, but you have to do something. Yeah, you have to have this kind of clothes here we are. Yeah, no problem, seems kind of cool. And then you have to shave your hair. I had long hair. Shave the hair, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. And I shaved up and I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> and quickly learned everything. All the songs they were chanting in the morning had a good memory at that time. And then uh, I went 
to Nepal to get a, after one month to get a new three month visa and, and apply the same time for one year entry visa, which usually you don't do, but the person there was kind, he said it's okay. You come back after three months, you don't have to wait here. And so I went back after three months, I came back and had some nice experiences, but I'll keep it short. After six months, I thought, well, maybe I should tell my parents something. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents, my sister told me later on, after ten years, they were very worried. And, you know, but it was an adventure. And, and they, they went to the police. And, they were looking for me in Switzerland, they couldn't find me, because I was in India. <laughs> and after two months later, they called Interpol. Oh my God. <laughs> but they didn't find me either, because I was in Vindam. <laughs> uh-huh. And, yeah, and I went to Nepal, but I was crossing, you know, the border there by bus, and so they never got me. But then after eight months, so finally, well, yeah, yeah, six, seven months for them. Fortunately, the letter arrived, because at that time, sometimes letters were not arriving from India, or coming to the west to, to the small village of Vindavan. And then they were kind, of, yeah, they were happy that I'm still alive, and so everything went, went well. So wonderful experiences were there when I went, first went to and yeah, and I learned so much very quickly. Of course, I had some difficulty with my health. So therefore, I went back to Switzerland. I stayed in Switzerland one year. And which was a nice experience, of course, also. In the temple, Zurich temple. And then I went to New York. Big city. Mm. And uh, so I stayed there in the temple. I was supposed to go for a visit for one month, but then they asked me to stay and serve the duties there and and do some preaching to the Indian community because I had learned Hindi well. So and I stayed for three years. And then but I was desiring to come back to to Brindavan because it is the most wonderful place. Of course it changed a lot mm. uh, the last forty years. Before it was a simple little village. And now it's a kind of small city with traffic jam, but still it is wonderful. So when I came back, I was seeing all that celebrate and I arrived in Delhi with my luggage, check-in luggage and one luggage for the devotees in, in Brindavan. And uh, so could have gone by taxi, but I wanted to save some money and because sometimes there was some traffic jam because the road was at that time uh, not the highway, it was a single way. So I took the train, I reached in Matra, I got down at the station. And India's most wonderful place, incredible India. You see the best and the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so I come out of the train the luggage, the two bag, heavy bags down, and okay. Oh, my shoulder bag is inside the train, and the train is just leaving. So I have the choice to jump on the train and get my shoulder bag. In the meantime, because people are already there, thieves waiting to steal some bag of somebody who's not detective. So I thought, well, I cannot do that because you know somebody else's things are there also. And the train is going, okay, my bag is gone with my passport and all my money. Oh. <laughs> I thought, anyhow, at least I have my two bags. And I'm happy to be back in, to be back in Brindavan, went to the guest house, and ready to go to, to the embassy the next day, and to give a report also, a police report. Ah, but then some devotees were telling me, we're going to Varsana tomorrow. You want to come? Sure, we're going to Varsana. And I run this place. I'll go there after tomorrow to the embassy. I went there happy and then come back and then at the reception of the guest house. There's one person from Gwalior waiting for you, which is three hours after Matra. A person from Gwalior? I don't know anyone in Gwalior. 
And the person is there with my bag. Oh. I think that it's almost unbelievable. Yeah. Almost unbelievable. Usually you drop something on the floor <laughs> and people are watching. You walk a few steps and then, oh my wallet is on the floor. You look back, the wallet is gone. <laughs> but this people are giving back to you. So, and you cannot leave the things. But this person was a kind of nice person, right? He was in the same compartment and so on. He came with a bag and my passport and all the money was there. A few hundred dollars. And I had changed hundred dollars and I had uh, some dollars and I had maybe five, six thousand rupees. So I was very happy and I said, what can I do for you? He said, I have my daughter's marriage after two months, after Kartik. Maybe we can give a little donation you know, towards the marriage. Many expenses are there in India for the marriage of the daughter. I said, sure, take all my rupees. And he was happy and I was happy. Mm -hmm. I got back my passport and my dollars mm -hmm. and I don't have to go to Delhi. And so that is a nice thing. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And can you say a few words if we are allowed to take Giriraj from Vrindavan, out of Vrindavan? Or oh, not? Oh, if you can take Giriraj yes. out of Vrindavan. Yes, maybe Giriraj, you're wondering. Giriraj is always in Vrindavan. Just like Krishna is always in Vrindavan. Krishna does not take one step out of Vrindavan. Radharani does not take one step out of Vrindavan. Balaram is not going out of Vrindavan. Giriraj is not going out of Vrindavan. Then somebody may ask, why but Krishna went to Matra? That is actually Vasudev Krishna. Vasudev Krishna is the expanded form of Krishna. Krishna appeared in Matra as well as Vasudev Krishna and in Gokul as Yashodananda Krishna. Mm. And Krishna's father Vasudev took his child, they appeared on the same time, the Supreme Lord, in Matra and in Braj. Many people in India, they don't know, but it is mentioned in the scriptures. So you have to hear from the persons who are highly advanced and realized. So Vasudev put his son, Krishna, to Nanda Baba, and it was night time, I was sleeping, even Mother Yashoda, and so she had Oh, Krishna appeared there first and then she turned around and then his sister Yoga Maya appeared. So she, Yoga Maya was in front of Yashoda and Krishna was in the back of Krishna. Then Krishna's father from Matra Vasudev put his son and he took the girl and put his son and he didn't see Yashoda and Krishna behind by Yashoda. So then he left home with uh, he went to the prison house in Matra where he was and with the daughter and that story everyone knows. So, but this story nobody knows or hardly anybody. Then Vasudev, Krishna from Matra, merged into Yashoda and then Krishna. And by the way, when Krishna is killing the demon, mostly this Vasudev Krishna who is killing. And Krishna is just enjoying in, in branch. So Vasudev Krishna is there in, in Krishna and even Vishnu is there in Krishna and sometimes Vishnu is killing the demon. But when Krishna is with the gopis with Shimatya Radharani, then Vasudev Krishna at noon time and night time, then Vasudev Krishna and Vishnu they go up in the sky because they cannot be in Krishna when Krishna is with the gopis because only they have love for Krishna only and they don't want to see anybody else. Mm. And they have no relationship with anybody else. And Krishna won't allow that, that anyone comes close to his beloved gopis. So then Krishna, so when Krishna is going to Matra, at the border of Prindavan and Matra, Akuru came to, to get Krishna to Matra, who was sent by Kamsa. He want to take bath. And he was thinking, I should take part of the Jamuna. And then Vasudev Krishna manifested in the river. Just a little chabatkar, something special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for the pleasure of his devotee Akrura. And Akrura see, ah, oh, because he had asked Krishna, but we don't want to take bath in the Jamuna. 
now we are okay. And then he goes into Gautam and he sees Krishna and Balaram there also. But that was actually Vasudeva and Shankarsha and Balaram who manifested. I was thinking, what I took to you, you know, don't know, you don't want to take bath, bath? They were just smiling. And he looks back at the chariot, he sees Krishna and Balaram in the chariot also. And he sees Vasudeva, Krishna, Shankarsha and Balaram in the water. And then they are smiling and then he realized the whole thing. And he went back on the chariot and then this Krishna and Balaram who were there in Krishna and Balaram, the original Krishna and Balaram, they are always in branch. And so Krishna and Balaram, the expanded form of the original Krishna and Balaram, they were in Matra, they went to Dwarka. Mm -hmm. And then later on the bridge of buses, they met Krishna. Mm -hmm. And the Dwarka buses at Kurukshetra. So, and then when Krishna goes to Matra, then Radharani is there, but not the original Radharani. She is also not manifest when Krishna is not manifest in Braj. And then Vyogini Radha is there crying and crying and crying. That is an expanded form. Because Radha and Krishna are always together. I'm keeping it short. <laughs> More to say, but. And then Radharani meets Krishna in, uh, in Kurukshetra. And so that is Samyogini Radha. An expanded form of the original Radharani, and that is Vasudev Krishna, they meet, but they, the Krishna knows everything. In Braj and Krishna and Dwarka also, they know each other. They simultaneously one and different. So with material intelligence we cannot understand, but by spiritual intelligence given by the Lord, by our being devoted to Him, by chanting the holy names of the Lord, then we can understand these things. So similarly, uh, so the point is that so Krishna is always in Braj, Radharani is always in Braj. Uh, Giriraj is always in Braj. Therefore the people say you cannot bring Giriraj out of Braj, which is true. You cannot bring Giriraj out of Braj. He's always in Braj. Now but uh, so therefore they will say, no, no, you cannot bring Giriraj out of Braj. Yeah, sure, we agree. But then we can see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is no different from Radha Krishna, he was in Puri. And he was always in Brajabhav. He was seeing the ocean, he was remembering Jamuna, jumping into the Jamuna. He was seeing the sand dunes, sand dunes in, in Puri, and he was remembering Govardhan. And he was seeing Jagannath, who is Dvarkadish, but in the mood of Krishna and Braj, remembering his pastimes in Braj, Mahabhav Prakash. And then, so, he was sometimes seeing Jagannath with the big eyes in Puri, but mostly he was seeing Krishna. And he was calling out to Krishna, 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 where are you? Because he came to give the holy names, the Yoga Dharma, but he came to give Prajapath. So he was always thinking about Krishna and Braj, and he was seeing Krishna and Braj and Radharani, the gopis, and speaking about them. Giriraj. So then one day Voti wanted to give something to Mahaprabhu taught that I want to give this Gaudan Chila to Mahaprabhu. So because Mahaprabhu is always in Braj Bhav. He's always in branch. And uh, so you cannot, so uh, actually the spiritual realm is transcendental to this material world always. And this material world is completely insignificant. So branch in the so-called district of, of Matra, in the Pradesh of um, Uttar Pradesh, one, one, the biggest uh, like kind of uh, district or the, the place a different Pradesh there uh, in India so the biggest place so inside there so district Matura is where Braj is situated so to say in India Bharatvarsha but that is uh, so it is manifest there and, but ultimately it is unlimited but with material vision we cannot see and understand but if we are there and if we are serving the Lord and 
performing spiritual practices, then we can understand that this is not different from the spiritual world. And uh, so it is manifest here by the mercy of the Lord, so the conditioned soul, they can become attracted to the spiritual realm. And they will engage in spiritual activities and then they will understand that they are not this body, that we are spirit souls, they can understand their relationship with the Supreme Lord. And then by practicing in this world, they can become perfect and then they can be transferred to the spiritual world. So Giriraj is also present and of course, it's a long story also how he came, how he came there and manifested. <coughs> and, uh, but to keep it short, so because actually, first Giriraj was in the Himalaya mountains. He was in the Himalaya mountains and he was brought by one great sage to Vrindavan and he stayed there. So he manifested in this way, by the Lord's way. So first he was in the mountains of the Himalayas, but then he manifested here uh, in Braj, because he belongs to Braj, so by the Lord's way he manifested in a certain way. And uh, so the material world is sometimes manifested only and then um, the holy place will manifest and then the holy river Yamuna is manifest and Govardhan Hill is manifest and uh, so uh, the point is that actually so Giriraj is in Braj Govardhan Shilas they are always in Braj and uh, so if you have that consciousness a pure devotee is always in Braj like our spirit master Prabhupada, so he was in America and talking different things, but he established Krishna consciousness all over the world and established temples of Krishna, Radha Krishna. So that becomes the spiritual world where the pure devotee is. And then they were talking about Vrindavan, he was saying, I am always in Vrindavan. And I am also always in Vrindavan. <laughs> and if you have deities at home, like here Radha Krishna, then we are in Braj Bhav, we are in Vrindavan. And it is just like American embassy or any embassy. Now in Switzerland, and some people are in America, you go to India, there's a Swiss embassy, there's an American embassy, you go there, it is just like being in Switzerland. And the same rule apply. If you have a Swiss passport, you can go there. If you don't have a Swiss passport, you cannot enter the Swiss embassy, same with the American. And if you want to go you know, to America, you have to you know, apply for a visa or something, but it's not so easy for Indians. For the Swiss, it's no problem. We don't need a visa. It's good to be Swiss, to have a Swiss passport. <laughs> so anyhow, so, uh, so, uh, so the branch is there in, in, in Matra district in India. But branch is present wherever the pure devotee is there. By his devotion, he can manifest branch because he's there in branch in consciousness, and then Krishna will manifest in the heart. And so, such a person, he can worship Giriraj, and he's always in branch. So Giriraj is not out of branch. Mm. But if you're not in this consciousness, if you don't have branch path, then you cannot worship Giriraj either in Braj or outside of Braj. But even in Braj, if you don't have Braj path, then you're not really in Braj. And we have seen many people that are so-called living in the holy place of Braj, but then they're watching movie, Hollywood, Bollywood. They're watching cricket. They're not in Braj, they're on the surface of Braj. They're on Brindavan, they are not in Brindavan. To be in Brindavan is not so easy only by performing devotional service, by the mercy of Sri Guru, by the mercy of the Holy Dham, you can be in Braj, in Vrindavan. And this is rare. So one who is qualified to worship Guru Raj is rare, even in Braj, but they are rare. But, but even, so the point is, if you are in Braj, in consciousness, in path, in mood, then you can worship Guru Raj. And as Mahaprabhu had Kiriraj in, in, in Puri and he gave to his devotee Raghunanda Goswami. And so then you can be anywhere in the world and you can worship Kiriraj if you are in Braj path. Otherwise not. I hope it is clear. 
If it is not clear, then you have a problem. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Jai Maharaji. Jai. Sachinandana Gaur Hare Ki. Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Shri Guru Dev Ki. Jai. Shri Radha Shama Sandar Ki. Guru Premanande Hare 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 Krishna. Mukunda Data Prabhu Ki. Jai.